Hello and welcome to episode number six of our Rust Bucket Restoration with this 1966 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia right hand drive. Today we are going to be doing the dirtiest job there is, it's sanding the car. So if you remember in the last two episodes, we put body filler on the car, we learned how to do that, how to mix it. The body filler is on here, it's applied, it's dry, it's ready to be sanded. So this is going to get very, very dirty and it's probably the dirtiest job we're going to do in a whole car restoration, but we got to do it, it has to be done, so let's get into it. Okay, so in episode number four, we talked about the tools that we're going to use to sand the body filler. So we're going to use the power tools, the air tools, to sort of get the body filler down to a level where we can hand sand it. So I've done most of that part already off camera, and now today I'm going to be doing a lot of the hand sanding. Now, there's a certain way you need to hand sand. It sounds weird, but there is, because a lot of people get this wrong, and they go too much, and they end up chasing their tail on this. So we don't want to be too aggressive with it, because we don't want to keep applying body filler, sanding it down too much, applying more, and we're just going to keep doing that. So what we want to do is take our time, look at what we're doing, clean it off every now and then, apply more body filler if we need to, wait for it to dry, and start sanding again. There's going to be there, you're bound to miss some spots of dents in the car that you didn't fix in metal work or that you're going to do with body filler now. But this is the time to do it. So look for all those dents. Look at the car in different light. Look at the light coming from different angles. I found spots on the rear fender that I didn't even know existed till the sun was setting and it hit the car just right where I found two more dents. So this is the time to do it because once you paint that car, you're going to be looking at these dents forever. You don't want to do that. It's going to bug you. So take your time. Look at every part from multiple angles. Take the light, move it around, and look for all these dents. Get them covered with body filler or metal work and move on. But this is the time to do it, so we got to do it now. All right, so if you guys remember in the last episode, we fixed this fender right here because it was not the right shape and it wasn't tall enough because we had to fix it with our template that we made. So that's already done, but as you can see, some of it got heated up. So we're going to take off this body filler right here, reapply it. But we're going to use this as an example to so you guys can learn how to sand the entire car and what I'm basically going to do. So I have a lot of different sanding blocks here. I have hard blocks that don't flex. I have flexible blocks that are real good. So we're going to be going at this car with it. So. Here's something that people always get wrong. They always sand like just crazy, willy-nilly. Don't do that. There's a good technique that you should do and that's only sanding in two directions. Why two directions? Because it makes it simple. I want this to be simple for you guys. So if we only sand in two directions, we're gonna know whether we've covered it or not. So we're gonna sand diagonal this way and diagonal this way. Why? Because then we can go over our first sanding scratches with the other sanding scratches and we know we did it. If you go all over crazy like that, what if you miss sanding scratches? That's why we're gonna do it in two directions. That's why people tell you to do it in two directions. Now there's nothing wrong with sanding crazy. I mean, you can sand in different directions if you need to, but just remember to go over it. That's the point. The point is, remember to go over your where you sanded before and go over it one more time because you don't want to have sanding scratches showing through your primer, okay? So, I'm going to do it in two directions. That's what I've been taught. That's how I learned, and that's what's easiest for me, and I think it's going to be easiest for you guys too because you're going to actually see the sanding scratches. You're going to see the pattern going one way. And you're like, oh, okay, now I need to go the other way, and you just repeat as necessary. So, let's take a look at sanding. So, I'm going to put this hard block on this fender. Look. It's moving back and forth, it's it's tilting. Why? Because the fender's rounded. So should I use a hard block? No. If I use a hard block, only this middle part's actually touching the fender. That's a waste of time. I'm gonna be doing that much sanding at a time? No, no, no. So I'm gonna switch that out. I'm gonna use a flexible, flexible block. So I'm gonna put it on here and now look. It's not tilting. Everything, all of the sandpaper is in contact with the fender. All right, so before we actually begin sanding, I got to do this little PSA for you guys, okay? You want to sand across the whole body filler and beyond. Why? Here's the point. Okay, let's, let me use a crew drawing. I got a regular piece of paper, okay? So, let's say this is the body. Here's our dent, okay? So there's the dent, all right? Now, we apply body filler. We're not perfect. We can't apply body filler just in this little hole. We apply it beyond the hole. So say we have it like this, okay? It's beyond the hole. Now you're gonna be tempted to focus on these little edges where the body filler is at, right here and right here. Why? Because you're gonna see that very clear lining. You're gonna sand it, and this is the problem that everybody gets into at some point. You're gonna focus on these edges, and you're gonna sand it till it blends in with the body. Okay, 
But what about this? You're missing this area. That's why I need to sand across the whole thing beyond it. So this will go down and it'll be perfectly flat across. Okay, don't focus on these edges only and blend it in and think you're done. Why? Because then if you have one here, you have another one there, it's going to be really bumpy and it's not going to be smooth or flat. Okay, so sand across the entire surface. Don't do like little sanding or don't use your machine and focus on these edges to blend them in because you're missing the majority of the body filler. So when you sand, sand across the whole thing. When you apply body filler, put it beyond just a little hole. I know it's a lot. It's going to look like a lot. Don't worry, probably 90% of the body filler you apply in your car is actually going to be sanded off. That's why it's going to get so dirty. So don't worry about applying too much. You're going to sand most of it off, okay? And don't focus on these edges. Now, let's get into sanding. Before we begin sanding, I want you guys to be safe. Wear safety glasses because there's going to be a lot of dust flying up. It's going to get in your eyes and be annoying. And most importantly, wear a dust mask. Okay, I want you guys to live a long life. This stuff is toxic. Who knows what it's going to do to you? Wear a mask, wear glasses. I have a long sleeve shirt, long pants, and gloves on. You guys got to be safe when you're doing this. So again, we're going to be sanding it in two directions, and you'll see how it comes out. It's going to look pretty good. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper for this because there's still a lot of body filler on here, so I want to bring the surface down. Did I go over it with the air tool? Yeah, a little bit, but on this one, uh, we didn't really need the air tool because we applied it really nicely. If you apply it terribly, then you'll probably use your air tool a lot more. But we applied this one real smooth, so we're going to go over it in two directions. Let's get into it. So you guys saw me sand in two directions. Now you're gonna ask yourself, well, how do I know when I'm done sanding? Let's say you're working on a door or a fender like me. How do I know I'm done? Well, you gotta read the panel. And now let's read this panel together. Do I think I'm done? Well, let's look right here in the center. I have a low spot. That's like a valley. So this is higher, this is higher, and that's lower. So do I fill it in? Well, that's another question you're gonna ask yourself. Well, again, we gotta read the panel. If we look, this isn't the only low spot I have. I have a low spot up here, I have low spots over here. It's not blended on the corners over here. It's not blended right here. Look at these low spots. So by reading this panel like that, I can say, no, I'm not done sanding yet. So am I gonna worry about that low spot and fill it in yet? Not yet. I'm gonna continue sanding and most, if not all these low spots are gonna come out, it's gonna be perfectly blended and then I'll be okay. However, what if I sand all of this and it's all blended in and it's all good and I still have this low spot. Then that's when you can add body filler. Why? Because I read the whole panel. It looks like everything else is good except for this one spot. So that's when I could fill it in. You got to read the panel. Step back from it and read it. I use a paper towel to clean it off so I can read the panel better. You guys can do that. Some people blow it off. The problem with blowing off with the compressed air is a lot of people get too close and the air is too strong and it's going to get all that little dust and it's going to cake it into these low spots and you're going to get a false reading and when you're further down the line on this project and you're on the high build it's going to fall out and then you're going to see a big low spot again so be careful with that compressed air don't go crazy spraying it uh, actually a better way to do would be to have a vacuum handy and suck out all that dust you can use this or a bristle brush and wipe it off all that sanding all the um all the dust, but a compressed air, be careful because you don't want it to kick it in and push it further into your bodywork. Then it's going to give you a false reading. So 
vacuum is probably the way to go or wipe it off but uh, compressed air I'd stay away from it you know you can use compressed air from further away but don't go into it that's that's gonna create more problems than it's worth all right so we read the panel and we see we have all these low spots we see it's not blended in we're gonna keep going and I'm gonna keep going and going and going till it's all nice and smooth till it's all see how it's this light color till it's all it's light color and then we're all perfect if I need to add more body filler because I have low spots that's fine I'll do it at that point but you're not going to be done in like five minutes on any panel at all. It's going to take you a long time. Go back and forth, be meticulous about it, find your low spots. So after I get this panel done and smooth and perfect, I'm going to move on to a different section of it. And I have some dents up here that I have to fill in, I have to sand right here, and then I have to do the whole rest of the car. This is a long process. This is the longest process of any car restoration that you're going to get to, and this is the most important. Uh, I would say most important is the most detail oriented I'd say because you don't want dents in your paint because once you put that clear coat on game over and you're gonna see those dents forever so take your time all right so that does it for this episode guys so in the next episode we're gonna be spraying on the high build primer and sanding this car again to get it perfectly straight this is a long process to make a show worthy car but you guys can do it if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing for those of you who have subscribed Thank you very much. I love to hear your comments. I love to reply back to you guys and see the projects that you're working on. Hopefully this motivates you. Hopefully this teaches you something. And that's what I'm after. So thanks again, guys.